Okie dokie. Started. Hello, Internet. Welcome back. We are here. We are live again today on this day. I hope you are there too. Hi, everybody on YouTube. I think YouTube has started. Facebook is coming. Somebody has been waiting since 1058. Wow. That two minutes ago? I don't know. But welcome. All right. As we wait for everybody to join, uh, I have a couple things that I want to go over from last week, of course, too, as always. Um, let's see. Oh, YouTube is still connecting. Oh, no. I, okay. We'll wait a little bit. We'll wait a little bit. Oh, now YouTube is up. Okay, great. So now YouTube is up. Is Facebook up? Should I start talking or should I wait for Facebook to start? Facebook. Hi, YouTube. Oh, good. I see. Okay. I see YouTube. Um, Kalel, yes, uh, you should be able to find me on Instagram. Actually, I'll share my uh, my username here in just a second. Um, let's see. Facebook, I think, is not up yet. Um, hello from Japan. Let's see. While we wait for Facebook, I will say hello. Oh, Facebook is up. Good. Okay. So I think we're ready to start then. Great. Okay. Everybody's joining. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to talk about the present perfect tense. So I hope you are ready. This is a really good grammar point. But while we wait for everybody to join us, uh, as usual, I want to just uh, review a couple things, some example sentences from last week, um, and uh, just to uh, answer a few questions that came up from last week as well. So to begin, uh, first, I guess I'll introduce my example sentence. Yeah, my picture from last week. Uh, last week, our topic was prepositions of place, prepositions of location. So we talked about how to use like at and in and by, and we talked about into and out of. So I used it. Uh, as always, I try to use it somewhere. Somebody asked about my Instagram username, but this is the same one. My Twitter and Instagram are the same. Um, I said some good English questions in video comments. So I used the preposition in here. Some good English questions in video comments, um, but many are small questions, blah, blah, blah. So here uh, we use in for the comment section of videos and blog posts and things like that, yeah? Why? Because it's uh, our comments, in this case, the questions are kind of like enclosed in the comment area. We talked about how we use in for like enclosed things or enclosed spaces. So this is another case where we use the preposition in. So this is my example sentence from last week. Um, yeah, so that's one I want to start with. Great, lots more people are joining. Hello, Moin from India, from Colombia. Kevin, hi. Uh, let's see, from Honduras, Norita, hello. Great. Uh, on YouTube, Sean, hello, good morning. Uh, from Thailand, good morning. Uh, so Kun from Thailand as well. Oh, no, sorry. So Kun, I couldn't catch your country there. Hi, on Facebook, I see you. Great. Uh, San from Japan, hello. Sende from Turkey, hi. Yuliani from Indonesia, hello. Thank you for coming. Um, great. Okay, while we wait a few more minutes, there are some really good questions from last week that I want to talk about. So, from last week, Seba89 said, I'm watching this video at my room. Is that correct? No. Uh, watching this video at my room is not correct. You are enclosed. You're surrounded in your room. You're in your room. So, we use in my room, not at my room. So, please be careful there. Okay, another really good question from, let's see, uh, Salomon Martinez, in the sea or on the beach was the question. This is a really good question. So like the beach and the ocean are really, really hard uh, for people to, to pick the right preposition with. So if you are swimming, we say you are in the sea or in the ocean, in the water, because you are surrounded by the water, yeah? If you're just visiting the beach, we say at the beach. I'm at the beach today. If you're laying and enjoying the sunshine, we say laying in the sun, in the sun, enclosed by sunlight, laying in the sun on the beach. Your, your body is laying on the beach. So there are lots of different prepositions that we can use with the beach and with the ocean. So thank you for that question. Okay, more people are coming. Rosara from Bolivia, I think. Wow, that went by fast. Okay, uh, Facebook, hello from Iraq. Ali, great. Simon from Taiwan, good morning. Uh, Fernando, uh, yes, my hand has improved from last week. I don't have to wear gauze. If you joined last week, I had a big uh, bandage on my hand. Thanks for noticing. 
Uh, let's see, Fernando on YouTube from Mexico. Hello, Ahmed from Yemen. Great, thank you for coming. Um, good. Okay. Um, let's see. I have one more. I have one more question I want to mention, and then we'll begin this week's present perfect tense topic. Uh, Devi Polineni, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, from last week said, uh, I'm watching this video at bus or in bus. What is correct? Uh, yeah, we didn't talk about on last week, the preposition on because of time. We didn't have enough time, really. Um, but the preposition on is usually used for uh, for transportation. So on the bus, on the plane, on the train. So typically, please use uh, on for transportation. I say typically because uh, for cars, we use in. So please use in for cars. Thank you for your question, though, Debbie. Okay, great. We have lots of people watching. Let's see. Pedroff from Bolivia, Eduardo from Guatemala. Hi. Evro from Ecuador. Great. Nia, you're new. Want to learn more? Great. Thank you for coming. We're going to talk about a grammar point today. Uh, let's see. Also from Peru on Facebook, Luis and Richie from Peru. Uh, Guadalupe, Mark, Michelle, great. And Vandy from Cambodia. Excellent. Lots of people. All right. If you have just joined, as always, please, please, please hit the like button on YouTube and on Facebook. It's so helpful for us. Uh, if we get good feedback, then we can continue making live streams. So please, please, please make sure to hit the like button and share it too. Sharing is also very, very helpful. So much appreciated. Please hit the like button. Okay, so with that, with our review from last week and with your great questions, I want to begin uh, today's topic. Today's topic, if you saw, I hope, uh, is the present perfect tense. So we've had a lot of questions about the present perfect tense, like when to use present perfect tense, uh, how to use it, what's the difference uh, between that and the uh, past tense. Uh, Jacob Wright, nice one. Alicia, <laughs> that was good. Uh, so today I want to talk about that. So uh, some grammar points and I want to make some example sentences with you guys. So uh, as we've been doing lately and as is super helpful, I will use a uh, whiteboard to draw some beautiful <laughs> diagrams again today uh, and we'll talk about the present perfect tense. So today I want to talk about two uses of the present perfect tense, two maybe uh, general kind of broad uses of the present perfect tense. But first, uh, I want to talk about how to make the present perfect tense. So a very simple sentence we can use to make present perfect tense, I think you're going to see it in a second, is this uh, subject, right? I think you'll see it. Yeah, here it is. So we use a subject plus has or have plus the past participle form of a verb. Okay, so this part maybe is a little unfamiliar, but for an example sentence, I have been to Europe, for example. I have eaten pizza, for example. So this part of the verb is maybe the difficult part. It's hard to study this, this part of the verb, this kind of verb, because uh, there's no real clear rule for this section. But this is the basic form of the present perfect tense, uh, a, a, a positive sentence. Um, so we'll practice this and we'll practice a negative form of this sentence too. So to make the negative form, we do the same sentence, but we add never here. So the subject plus has and have plus never before the verb. I have never been to Europe. I have never eaten pizza. So this is the uh, basic form of the sentences we are going to practice today. Okay, so let's begin with the first use of the present perfect tense. Okay, so if you've been watching lately, you know that I like to draw things lately. So uh, I'm going to use a timeline today. I've used a timeline a few times in other live streams, but uh, I've used the same timeline, I think, a couple times before. Um, so. I'm, uh, I'm just going to introduce uh, when to use uh, this first type of uh, present perfect tense. So here's a simple timeline with past and uh, this star is now future. We're not going to worry so much about it today. We're going to focus a lot on the past and now uh, these two points today. So the first uh, kind of 
uh, present perfect tense that I want to talk about is for general life experiences. So we use present perfect tense to talk about just a general experience we've had in our life. So I just said, uh, for example, I've been to Europe is a good example of that. Or I've never been to, uh, I don't know, Africa, for example. So uh, these are general life experiences. However, we don't know the point in time when the experience happened. We don't know, or rather the listener does not know the point in time when the action happened, when the experience happened, or it's just not important. So if you think about it, it's an experience. It happened in the past, sometime before now, but when is not important, or when is, is not the focus of the sentence. We just want to express experience of something. So if you need a visual, this is kind of how you can visualize, imagine, uh, grammar point number one. So um, let's try to make a simple general life sentence uh, with the present perfect tense then. Um, so this is good for talking about uh, like things you've eaten, uh, it's good for talking about travel, uh, it's good for talking about work as well. So let's, uh, if you're ready, I hope you're ready, you're going to need to type something at me now. <laughs> okay, so uh, our example sentence here, uh, your question will be, what is the strangest thing you have eaten? And our follow-up question here is in past tense, please be careful, where did you eat it? Where did you eat it? So. What is the strangest thing you have eaten and where did you eat it? So we'll use the present perfect tense in the first sentence to answer. The strangest thing I've eaten is, and past tense here. We practiced past tense a few weeks ago, yeah? Do you remember? I ate it, ah, and in, a preposition from last week. Yeah, look at this. We are reviewing so much from our live streams in these two sentences, great. So what is the strangest thing you have eaten and where did you eat it? So like the strangest thing, oh, the strangest thing I have eaten is pickled pig's feet. I ate it in my hometown when I was in high school. I remember that, it was disgusting. I did not like it at all. That was the strangest thing I've ever eaten. Pickled pig's feet, that is a true story. <laughs> that is a true story. All right, so how about you? What is the strangest thing you have eaten? Someone said, I've finished my breakfast. I hope that's not so strange. Uh, what is the strangest thing that you have eaten? And where did you eat it? What happened? All right. Oh, good. Okay, there we go. There was a pause for a second there. Jacob Wright says, the strangest thing I have eaten is candied scorpions. I ate it in a Chinese restaurant. Candied scorpions. I can't imagine that. But great. The strangest thing I have eaten is candied scorpions. I ate it in a Chinese restaurant. Nice. Denilson, the strangest thing I've eaten is monkey's meat. I ate it in Maranhao, Brazil. Monkey meat. <gasps> Interesting. I can't imagine that. Okay. On Facebook, Fernanda says, the strangest thing I have eaten is crab. I ate it in the north of Brazil. Oh, was it like a strange kind of crab? I wonder. Okay. Um, let's see. Games and Song says, I've eaten a frog in a restaurant near my house. It was delicious. I've heard frog is delicious. I've heard frog is similar to chicken. See, I used present perfect tense there. I've heard, I have heard that frog is delicious. Good. Nancy says, I have eaten snails. I, I, I ate it in Ensenada, California. Oh, really? Ensenada. Nice. Uh, Yolanda on YouTube says, the strangest thing I have eaten is eagle. I ate it in a restaurant. Whoa, in which country? I have never heard of someone eating eagle before. That sounds really interesting. Very cool. Uh, Eduardo on YouTube says, I've eaten lots, oh, I've eaten frog legs in a Chinese restaurant. Whoa, okay. Um, what else? Marco, is that true on YouTube? <laughs> is that true? Where did you eat that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Julio says the strangest thing I've eaten is tacos with salt. Is that strange? Is it strange? I don't know. Jennifer says the strangest thing I have eaten is cat. I ate it in Ica, Peru. Peru. I wonder how was that? Uh, Juan on YouTube says the strangest thing I've eaten is crickets. I ate it in Oaxaca, Mexico. Whoa. Post guy, the strangest thing I've eaten is bro bro broccoli. How do you say that? Broccoli? I ate it in Africa. What is that? 
Someone on YouTube says the strangest thing I've eaten is dolphin meat. I ate it at my grandpa's house. Whoa, dolphin meat. Whoa. Uh, Garrison on Facebook, the strangest thing I have eaten is burritos. <laughs> I ate it in a restaurant. Are burritos strange? I love burritos. What? <laughs> Are burritos strange? I don't know. All right. Everton on YouTube says I have eaten cockroach of the sea. What is a cockroach of the sea? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so lots of strange things out there. I have never heard of some of these strange things, but good. So we use present perfect tense. The strangest thing I have eaten is something, something, something. Here's our present perfect tense today. So I have never eaten most of those foods you guys just explain. But okay, very nice sentences, good work. So let's continue on maybe to our, our second grammar point for today. So I said I want to talk about two uh, grammar points with present perfect tense. Uh, so the first one we just practiced, we use for just a life experience, a general life experience, <laughs> a general life experience. We don't know or it's not important when the experience happened necessarily. However, the second experience, or I'm sorry, the second grammar point I want to talk about today uh, is a slightly different use of the present perfect tense. Okay, so I have made a new line in a different color. So the second uh, point, the second way to use present perfect tense that I want to talk about today is this, it looks like this. So uh, it's an action which started in the past and continues to the present, or the effect of that action starts in the past and continues to the present. So for example, I have studied English for six months, or we've worked together since 2012, or he has lived there for many years. So these are actions, they started in the past, but they continue to the present, or the effect of that action continues to the present. So. Um, there are two grammar points we're talking about today. The second one is a con uh, uh, an action which has an effect in the present or which is uh, continuing to the present. So uh, we can use the second grammar point. It's good for talking about your studies, for talking about where you live, for talking about where you work. Uh, we can use it to talk about the weather too. Like for example, it has started raining. We can use that for weather changes. Um, but I want to use it uh, for you to talk about where you work or maybe where you study and how long you do that. So our second example sentence for today is coming in just a minute. Uh, the question is, what do you do? So first, this is a simple, what do you do? What is your job, in other words? So I'm a teacher, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I'm a student here. So what's your job? What do you do? Here is our present perfect tense sentence though. How long have you done that job? Or how long have you been a student? So I've been a teacher for or since, here's an extra challenge for you today, for three years. So if you would like to use for, please follow it with a period of time for three years, for two months, for six days. If you would like to use since, Please use a specific point in time, since 2012, since yesterday, <laughs> and so on. So what do you do and how long have you done that job? I'm a student. I've been a student for 22 years, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Or I'm an engineer. I've been an engineer since 2010. So. Okay, great. Jacob Wright is first one in on YouTube. I'm a camp counselor. I've been a camp counselor since the summer of 2016. Perfect. Nicely done. Ed, let's see. Edwin on Facebook. I'm a student. I've been a student since 2014. Perfect. Very nice. Uh, what else? I've Oh, I've studied English since I was a teenager. Games and songs. Nice work. Uh, Denilson on YouTube. I am a Portuguese teacher. I have been a Portuguese teacher for four years. Perfect. Lots of teachers here. Juan on YouTube. I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher for 15 years. Nice. Alexander. I've been a, a, don't forget this. I've been a software developer for six years. Don't forget your article here. Yeah. A uh, or an. Mm, don't forget this guy. Uh, Nancy. I'm a sociology teacher. Maybe I've been a socio uh, sociologist. Maybe you study sociology. I'm a sociologist. Uh, be careful. 
Simo on YouTube, I'm a civil engineer. I've been a civil engineer since 2014. Great. Aline, I'm a kindergarten teacher. Been a teacher for almost 20 years. Great. Lots of teachers. Uh, Pedroff, I'm a student. I've been a student for 40 years. Great. On Facebook, I'm a student. Been a student since 2000. Oh, 2000. Good. Garrison, I'm a computer technician. I've been a computer technician since 2015. Great. Mongolian English says, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse since 2014 on Facebook. Very nice. Wow, there are lots of teachers and students watching. Fantastic. Uh, on, let's see, YouTube. Ju, maybe? I'm a student. I've been a student for 20 years. Good. And what else? ZP says, I'm an I, I'm N. Yeah, I'm N when... Make sure to use Anne here. I'm an IT boss. I've been a boss since 2009. Great. Uh, Gil says, I've been an engineer for seven years, I think. That went fast. Uh, Sia says, I'm an uh, account, not accounting. I'm an accountant. I'm an accountant. Uh, I've been a uh, maybe accounting student. I'm not sure. I'm Make sure this, this part and this part should match. Yeah, same thing here, same title should match. I'm an accounting student. I've been an accounting student for a million years. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. Celio said, I'm a historian. Ah, the chat went by quick. Um, some, ah, that, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's see on Facebook. I'm, uh, Milena says, I'm maybe I'm in finance. You can use in here before an industry. I'm in industry. I'm in finance. I've been in finance for two years. So it's okay to use an industry here instead of your job title. Very nice. Daniel on YouTube, I'm a lifeguard. I've been a lifeguard for two years. Great, very nice. Okay, sounds good. Let's move on though. Perfect, lots of people who are studying. Fantastic, this one seems easy for you guys. Great work, really good. Okay, let's take a look though because the team, the crew has prepared uh, free gifts for you guys as always. So I want to take a minute to introduce those. Let's have a look. You guys have free PDFs this week. So I think you're going to see at the bottom of this page, there are some PDFs that are specific to like some various situations. So going to the bank, visiting your family, uh, going to work, traveling when you're at a restaurant, and so on. If you realize that you have trouble or there's a gap in your language skills in one of these places, you can uh, sign up on the website and download these for free. So these are really, really easy to use because they are PDFs. So that means you can uh, download them and save them to your phone, save them to your computer and use them offline. Some of you have told us that you uh, sometimes don't have access to internet when you want to study. Uh, so these could be really, really good ways for you to review your vocabulary and to practice that. So please, go to the website and check it out. The link for this is in the description. So if you're watching on YouTube, please check the link in the description below the video. If you are watching on Facebook, please check the link above the video, but please check it out. It's on the website and they are free. There's a whole bunch of free stuff on the website, but this is a good one that the team really wants you to check out. So take a look, go check it out, go check it out. Link down here on YouTube, link up here on Facebook. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, if you if you haven't been, that's all at EnglishClass101.com. So that's where the link will take you. Okay, great. Then let's continue in our studies of present perfect tense. Oh, yes, if you are just joining us, today's topic is the present perfect tense. Present perfect tense. So if you're just joining, please make sure to hit the like button. Uh, or if you're watching this video not live, please also hit the like button. It's still very, very helpful. Uh, if you if you like this and share it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever, it's super helpful for us. Uh, the more people watch, the more we can continue to make these videos. So please, please, please uh, like and share our video. Okay, let's recap. So present perfect tense, we talked about uh, the first one in blue here, how to use present perfect tense for a general life experience. And second, to talk about a, a, an action which started in the past and then continues to the present or the effects of that action continue to the present. Yeah. I want to make a point. We practiced it in our second example sentence today, though. 
for a kind of natural flow with this grammar point, you might introduce a question in the present perfect tense, like what's the strangest thing you've eaten, for example, and then follow up questions, more specific questions are in the past tense, in the past tense. On the other hand, we can use a present perfect tense to introduce a question about something you've never done and then ask a follow-up question uh, relating to your future plans too. So I want to try that. So for example, uh, let's look at our next question here, kind of a little bit different, a different challenge here, kind of a future tense uh, exercise. What's something you have never done, you have never done, but want to do? And a follow-up question, yeah? When might you do it? When might you do it? What is something you have never done? So that means here, no life experience. That means no life experience here. Something you've never done, but you want to do. So what is something you've never done, but you want to do? So for example, I've never been to France, but I want to go. And then I might go in 2018. I might go in 2018. So I've never been to France, but I want to go. I might go in 2018. Or maybe I've never eaten candied scorpions, <laughs> but I might try them in the future. <laughs> I don't know. So what is something you have never done, but you want to do? And when might you do it? Okay, so let's try this one. Let's try this one. Future plans, future plans. <laughs> great, great. Our producer is making good jokes. <laughs> All right. Junior, hello. Tiago, hello. Thank you for joining. Let's try this question. What's something you have never done but want to do? So what do you want to do? I've never been skydiving, but I want to. I might go skydiving in my home country. I don't know. That wasn't a very good sentence. Okay, Silvio on YouTube says, I've never been to Mars, but I, wa I want to. I might go in 2100. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> good luck. Good luck getting to Mars. Let me know. Let me know if you can get there. Great. Jorge says, I've never been, I've never gone, or I've never been. Remember, we need to use the past participle form of the verb. I've never been to the USA, but I, careful, but I might go in four years. So be careful there. These two sentences should connect. Thiago says, I've never been abroad, but I want to. Great. When? When? I might go in. When? 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 Okay. Sekai, nice. Hey, welcome back this week on Facebook. Uh, I've never been to the USA, but I want to. I might go in 2020. Perfect. Sandra on Facebook, I have never been, be careful, not past tense, not past tense. I have never been, been for travel. I've never been or have never gone. I've never gone or I've never been to Australia, but I want to. I might go, oh, I might go in next Monday. Next Monday sounds like you have a plan. Yeah, next Monday is very, very soon. So I might go, uh, next year, for example. It should be kind of far in the future. Great! More on YouTube! I've never been to India, but I want to go. I might travel next year. Next year. So, uh, we talked last, no, two weeks ago. If you use this I, or uh, next year, for example, no preposition is needed here, yeah? So I might go in 2018 or I might go in a few months. But if you use this year, next year, we do not need a preposition here. Okay. I've never seen Aurora Borealis, but I want to. I might see it in 2018 in Canada. Nice one. Jennifer, that's a great idea. I too. I want to see the Aurora Borealis. I have never seen that before. Great. Okay, Eduardo on YouTube, I've never been to the States, but I want to. I might go in two years. Good. Okay. Dark Phantom, I've never been abroad, but I want to. I might go in I might go to Poland next summer. I might go in Poland next summer. Great. Okay. What else? On Facebook, Rivera, I have never been to Florida, but I want to. I might go in uh, 2018. Sorry. Uh it was quick. Uh, Mark Michelle, I've never been to New Orleans, but I want to. I might go in uh, in close times. I might go soon. I might go soon. Not close times. I might go soon. On YouTube, I've never been to Africa, but I might go. I want to go one day. Good. 
Uh, oh, Byron, nice one. I've never played an instrument, but I might do it this year. Nice, okay. Antonio, I've never watched uh, English Class 101, but I want to. I might watch you in your channel. Thanks, please watch. Please watch and like us. Great, great. Okay, Gabriel says, I've never eaten your food. Oh, that's true, that's true, you have not. Great, very, very nice work. Okay, but I have run out of time as usual, so I need to wrap it up. I need to close things up pretty soon here. You guys have done a really nice job using present perfect tense. I know that this is a challenging grammar point. Uh, to talk about, but you can watch this video again on YouTube or on Facebook so that you can maybe practice some of the sentences we talked about and you can review the uh, how to make how to make present perfect tense sentences. Also, we made a video about this uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we're doing some new whiteboard based videos, very uh, teachery videos. So a present perfect tense video will be out soon. So please check that on our YouTube channel. Okay, but uh, it's time for me to finish up. So today's, let's see, today's live stream will finish here. But next week, we are going to do another live stream. Of course, same time, same place. Next week's topic, I'm going to talk about responsibilities and things like that. So many of you have asked about have to, got to, need to, and must. When should we use these? What is the difference? What? So I'm going to talk about these points next week. Have to, got to, need to, must will be next week's topic. So please join in. Please make sure to watch and comment. Lots of comments and sharings and like everybody. Always like, always like. Um, that will be next uh, Wednesday, October 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wednesday, October 4th. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join in again and send your excellent example sentences and uh, make sure to uh, participate. Your example sentences today were awesome. Really, really good. Really nice job. Uh, so every time, same time, same place. And next week, we'll talk about responsibilities. So thank you so much for joining today. It was great uh, to practice with you. And I hope that you have a nice week. Uh, please make sure to check out the channel. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. And I think you're going to see our free PDFs soon, which are up at EnglishClass101.com. So have a nice week. I will see you again at this time next week. Enjoy your day or your night. Bye-bye.